Welcome to part three of uh, my series of videos of building the DJH A8 kit. Uh, and today what we're going to do is we're going to do part two, page two, which consists of 16 white metal pewter castings and a number of etch parts. Uh, and this is basically further detail to the uh, to the chassis um, springs dummy springs exhaust steam in ejector injector um, sand boxes fillers and uh, a bit of pipe work and the brake gear so following on from my last video um, I mentioned that um, there was a little bit of work outstanding on the chassis uh, and that was strengthening the rear footsteps which you may be able to see uh, just use 0.8 millimeter wire not the wire that was in the kit and I've also strengthened the rear and the front guard irons using the same wire but what I've done is to make the wire less obtrusive I've used the Dremel on the the bit at the front to grind it down slightly so it doesn't look so rounded um, and I think it improves the uh, the look so what we're going to do first is we're going to do the um, the rear the rear right hand side sorry the rear left hand side i should say the rear left hand side wheel dummy wheel spring which is a white metal casting pewter casting the castings are pretty clean but some of them you may notice on the on the left of this one there's a little bit of a, a tag from the casting process and what we'll do is we'll cut these off um, using a sharp scalpel um, I've tried the fit already they do fit very well so I'll cut I'll prepare the castings uh, and then I'll talk you through what I'm going to do next okay so we've got the um, the wheel springs which are quite large um, white metal castings I've just slightly bent that one so I'll straighten it out with some tweezers very gently they don't need all that much cleaning up um, they're very clean castings uh, this one is the one that I'm going to use in the position so um, I've uh, stolen some of my wife's um, uh, nail boards and I will just remove this slight casting mark on the top of this this bit in the middle which needs to be completely flat and that applies to all the other ones that you're going to fit and there are six of them in total so we'll just remove the slight flash marks off that that's uh, that's perfectly okay so we have our casting here that we're going to use the reason that we're doing this one first is that we need to fit this now this is the exhaust um, steam injector and there's a large pipe which runs virtually the whole length of the chassis which we've got to fit it's very important that you get this the right way up there are a number of um, flanges on it which you can drill out and add extra pipe work uh, the one on the inside this one here which you may or may not be able to see but that one you can't really put any pipe work into it because it's so close to the wheel spring um, so it's not really worth doing but I'll probably do the bottom ones and they you have so you have three holes that need drilling out in white metal Dremel with a one millimeter bit and I will use a little bit of oil on it if I can find my oil I will use this oil this is sewing machine oil a slight drop on the tip and then we'll drill this the three holes out 
that we required, so it's two in the bottom. Okay, and one in the top. So there are your three holes. I'm not bothered with the one on the inside. There is a slight witness mark on the on this bit of tube. You may be able to see it it's below the tweezers there. It's a flange, so we need to cut through that and remove this bit, the bit to the to the right of where you're looking, uh, to the left. Uh, whichever it is but you need to remove this bit here this is where the brass pipe joins on which runs the length of the locomotive the casting is again is quite clean however there is uh, to get it to fit in where it needs it needs to go in this angled piece in the chassis here which you may see next to my finger this bit here you might need to clean off uh, a little bit and check that it fits but you need to check that it fits and this flange at the back needs to be perfectly upright there is a pipe that go connects from that to the tanks which are part of this part of the body uh, and you need to make that removable okay so I'll go away and do that and I'll show you what I've done when I've finished so I've slightly changed my mind a little bit about the uh, the casting. Um, you can see I've removed all of the um, spigot that was on this end um, very carefully. Um, the flange on the end, which you may or may not be able to see, has actually got four raised bolts, so you have to be really, really careful removing it. If you don't want to remove the detail around the flange now what I've done the pipe that runs the uh, steam pipe that runs it's actually two millimeter brass rod but what I've done is I've drilled the hole slightly larger uh, and this is because when you um, fix the uh, the brass rod to the um, to the exhaust injector the I'm going to tin this with um, 145 degree solder and then tin it again with 70 degree low melt solder so that I can solder it to the casting if you drill the hole in this two millimeter this rod is two millimeter so it won't it won't actually fit so if you want a good connection and to make it robust drill the hole in this slightly larger I use 2.2 millimeter drill um, from my drill kit and, and that should allow for the extra thickness on the uh, on the rod when you come to secure it um, and what I'll do is I'll tin the tin the rod and I'll use indirect heat to fix it when I get round to it but I'm not going to fix it to this yet I'm just going to fix this casting to the chassis the reason that I'm not going to fix this yet is it's got to have a number of bends in it which we will do by annealing this and then bending it but then what we've got to do first is we've got to measure this off against the chassis so all the bends are in the correct place so we'll fit this part first then we will fit the uh, dummy brake spring that fits around the back of it uh, if you don't do this the, the, you can't if you do this bit first you can't get this bit in so you need to fit this bit first and then the dummy spring that is adjacent to the mounting for this okay so I will go away and do this first and then I'll show you what I, what I've done what I'm how I'm going to do I'm going to use um, low melt solder 70 degree solder set my soldering iron to 320 degrees it's a 75 watt soldering iron I found by experimentation that 320 degrees is pretty effective for soldering mic metal. It's not hot enough to melt larger castings. 
to fit the uh, castings, we, we're going to tin the inside of the chassis where the brake, uh, where the dummy springs fit uh, with 145 degree solder. Uh, we're going to do that first before we fit this bit so it's all ready to do later on. Um, there is no need to do any tinning for the for the bracket for uh, this casting because in the first bit if you've done it correctly you should have uh, tinned the inside of the mounting to uh, reinforce the half etched joints in the part so there's no need to do that I'll go away and do this uh, and when I finished I should have six dummy spring castings and the exhaust steam injector fitted ready to show you. Okay so I've now done that I've fitted the um, the six dummy wheel springs and the exhaust steam injector ejector which you can just about see as I said you need to put that in first before you do this dummy spring now I've soldered these in using low metal low melt solder 70 degree solder uh, it makes it clear in the instructions that uh, you can also use uh, five minute epoxy or um, super glue I personally wouldn't recommend super glue for these particular fittings as they would probably tend to break off uh, five minute epoxy probably would be acceptable but I'm confident enough to uh, use do low melt soldering um, uh, another tip with this is that the keeper plates they fit in um, I don't know if you can see that but directly oh, let's get something to point with directly above each wheel bearing there is a rectangular cutout uh, and the keeper plate that is part of the casting actually fits into that um, so that helps you locate them what you need to do when you do these is continually check try the bits make sure they fit beforehand so you get a nice smooth fit the, there is a, a ledge on the outside of the casting which sits on top of the chassis so that gets your vertical position along with the keeper plate um, and make sure that it's uh, it's as full forward as possible there may be some dressing necessary for the for the end plates here to make sure that it's flat against the chassis. No white metal castings are completely perfect, um, but it's relatively easy to do. Uh, certainly for me, had no problems doing that at all. And then fitting the exhaust steam injector injector here in between. If you remember, I drilled one hole one millimeter hole on the outside uh, on the lower part of this which goes there's pipe work that goes into it what you need to do is make sure that that hole is as near as you can make it vertical don't worry about that the flange plate at the other end isn't square to the line of the chassis that's not all that important so what we're going to do next is we're going to fit the um, the pipe which is the exhaust steam feed to the injector uh, the white metal casting what I will do is I will bend this I will anneal it first in a gas flame because it needs a number of bends in it uh, I'll dress off the end as I mentioned in the first bit I will tin with 145 degree solder and then tin it again with 70 degree solder so I can solder it to the hole that I've drilled in the exhaust uh, steam injector casting using indirect heat uh, and that will secure it in place and it also rests on this other flange 
part of the chassis casting which you could probably see below my finger it actually rests on that and then it folds up so it pretends that it goes into the cylinders which which are actually um, in this in this plane okay so I'll go away and do that and I'll show you what I've done when I've done it okay so we have made the basic shape of the exhaust steam pipe from the cylinders to the injector I've left a long tail on it because it needs to be bent again roughly here but it's difficult to tell um, so rather than get it wrong and have to take it out and reshape it I've left quite a long tail on it I've got it as near as I can so I show you against the red background so that it's uh, in the same plane this bit this bit and this bit are roughly level and it needs to fit in the front motion plate there is a hole but the hole isn't um, there's a hole in the etching here which isn't big enough to actually accommodate this pipe so it needs to be opened out into a c-shape to to fit the pipe and what we'll do is we'll fit the pipe just check that it uh, fits correctly looks okay so there you have it from below it's in the injector it bends up right in between next to the um, dummy motion as you can see and now I'm going to solder it in place uh, in th three places one in the injector one on this bracket and one on the motion plate at the front and I'll show you when that's done so we've fitted the exhaust steam pipe which you may or may not be able to see I can just about see it there See if we can find something white. Oh, right, so you can just about see the pipe along the bottom. I've soldered it into the casting for the exhaust steam injector using the method that I mentioned earlier, which was in the end of the rod with 145 degree solder and then use 70 degree solder it's also soldered to the angle bracket that I mentioned there it's also soldered into the motion plate there and I've bent the end so you can just see that it just sticks up just above the uh, where the cylinders fit uh, and that should be concealed by the front end of the locomotive when it's finished when the body's fitted so there we go that's off to the side should just about be able to see that so the next thing that we're going to do is uh, we're going to fit the brake gear next now the brake gear consists of a brake cylinder uh, a way shaft, a couple of uh, etched parts for levers, then the cross pieces, the brake pull rods, and then there are six white metal castings for the brake gear. Um, and again, I'm going to fit the um, I'm going to fit the brake shoes and the brake cylinder first, tinning the nickel silver and copper surfaces with 145 and then with low melt solder and then sweating the pieces into part place with indirect heat and then we will fit the uh, the cross piece and the uh, brake pull rods and everything and I'll show you when that's all done you need to use 1.6 millimeter um, wire which is included in the kit for the cross piece at the back um, uh, and that's about all there is really for this bit um, 
and then uh, all that's left after that is the four sand boxes and the sand sanding valves uh, and then this bit will be finished so what I'll do is I'll go away and do the brake gear first show you let you know of any problems I come up against and then we'll do the um, we'll do the sand boxes last uh, and we'll see what the time is and then maybe we can move on to page three as well in this program but we'll see how the time's getting on okay so I'm going to do the brake gear next uh, and if you just bear with me while I do it okay I've fitted the, the brake gear you should be able to see fitted the brake gear uh, including the brake cylinder and the pull rods at the back the holes that the castings fit in in the chassis they need to be drilled out at two millimeter uh, and it may be also necessary to dress there's a spigot on the end where the triangular part of the mounting plate is for the uh, brake shoe it may be necessary to dress that for any imperfections in the casting but the holes that you will need to drill are two millimeter um, the holes in the bottom of the brake assembly castings either 0.9 or 1 millimeter if you can get away with 0.9 I would use 0.9 um, if not it will have to be 1 millimeter but 1 millimeter is, is a good fit it's a loose fit but it's a good fit um, this part here that you may be able to see it's actually part number it's part number e e for echo e23 in the um, instructions is very very thick and it's ex extremely easy to bend so when you fit it uh, please be careful because it's that actual rod that sets the position of all the brake gear the cross pieces and the draw rods in between they all come etched as one part um, and you will need to also make sure that you have got that the right way up um, otherwise there's a slot that just by my finger there's a slot in the pull in the pull rod that that e23 part goes into and it needs to be on the correct side so make sure you get it the right way up when you do it and that's with um, the rods on the underside so the detail oh, I don't again I don't know if you can see but um, the rods go above so they go behind if you look from the bottom the actual etch rods which are part of the pull pull rods they go behind the intermediate pull rods and that's that will make sure that you actually get the notch in the bit of the end on the correct side how I did the soldering I, again I said I tinned where all the shoes had to go 145 and 70 um, and then I used indirect heat from behind uh, I did actually damage one brake shoe um, and I will need to point out to you that um, when you I'm, I soldered the cross pieces to the shoes um, the white metal castings are quite thin uh, and if you just leave it on a bit too long it is all too easy to, to damage them luckily it was salvageable, salvageable and repairable um, and you can't really see that it's broken unless you look at it really carefully so setting up the um, brake shoes take your time about this bit um, and use the etched parts to set the correct distance it's all etched one piece it's etched correctly so if you use the etch part to set up the where all the brake shoes go you shouldn't have a problem fitting them so all that's left now for this part is the four um, the four 
sandboxes I'll fit them and but I will leave the valves off for the moment so I'm going to fit the four sandboxes but leave the valves underneath off because they they will need to be glued in but it will be easier to put the wire into them for the sandpipes with them separately rather than glue them to the uh, the boxes and then uh, tear gas myself out of existence when I come to um, put the wire in so I'll go away and do that now and I'll show it to you um, I don't think there's going to be enough time for me to do any more than this today so um, I will um, I will carry on with this hopefully later in the week but again I said that I go away and I'll do the sandboxes the other thing that I forgot to mention I've also got to fit the rear bearings uh, and I will do those as well uh, and then I'll come back to you and show you what I've done right so I've now finished this page from the instructions page 2 so I fitted the rear sandboxes they just uh, solder on in the angle in the joggle where you've bent the chassis in they're straightforward there's no problem fitting those I fitted the rear axle bearings and their white metal retaining collars so the rear axles move up and down and the other thing that I've done is that I cut a small uh, slit in the uh, white metal bearings um, or the white metal retaining collars at the rear uh, and if you remember from the first part you fitted some uh, 0.4 millimeter piano wire which is the suspension I've cut two slots in the um, white metal retaining collars and the uh, piano wire sits in those so there's no temptation for it to become dislodged it will all always press down for the rear axle so both of those move okay um, what I'll do later is I'll, uh, I'll lubricate the uh, slides in the bearings so they go up and down nicely the front sand boxes which you may be able to see which are beneath the footsteps um, they're quite tricky to fit firstly they're, they're very small and if you remember from the first part when you folded down the footstep supports uh, they're sort of square etching with a hole in the middle well the hole in the middle is where the sandboxes fit and they're quite hard to get in so what I did is uh, there's a locating tab on the back I trimmed off um, about a millimetre or a millimetre and a half of the bottom using a scalpel uh, and that allows you to put them in and then slide them down. Um, they were both soldered on using indirect heat. Um, again the outside was tin 14570 soldered at uh, 320 degrees centigrade with indirect heat. Um, and they're both in place. Uh, both sandboxes I drilled. Remember, I said I didn't wasn't going to fit the valves at the moment. I've drilled them one millimetre to take the uh, the valves. The A8s weren't fitted with uh, downs um, sanding, so uh, there's no extra steam pipes to them. So they just had normal steam sanding. Uh, and there's one last piece which I didn't mention so you can see there's this piece here now this piece is uh, E19 so it's an etched part um, and what it's for it's basically a dummy mounting for the ends of what is called positive lubrication on these locomotives when they when they originally built uh, well when they were originally converted to A8 from the H1 they had standard 
displacement lubricators that were driven on the outside but they were driven from the inside motion they didn't have anything from the outside so when you see um, when you look at pictures of A8s in the in the once they were built in the 30s and early 40s uh, they just like look like an outside cylinder 460 um, but with inside motion if you look at pictures in the late 40s 1950s until withdrawal you'll see on the front um, axle the driven axle where the coupling rod attaches to the, um, the wheel boss on the outside it looks like what you would normally have a return crank on a wall shirts gear locomotive well that there's one on either side and that is called positive lubrication and what those rods did and that we're going to fit later they drove the uh, the three lubricators there's two on one side and one on the other uh, so it looks like it's got valve gear but it, they're actually drive for the um, for the uh, displacement lubricators which sit on the foot plate of the locomotive and that's the dummy mounting bracket for it so that you actually get the motion but it does they don't connect to anything so there it is that's the um, completed chassis form um, page two I hope you've enjoyed it and I must apologize that I can't can't do any further uh, domestic duties um, uh, are beckoning so um, thank you for watching and please watch out for the next one which you, page three which consists of I'll just give you a teaser trailer it's basically fitting the cylinders um, and the wheels and the pickups um, but we'll run that through hopefully maybe this week if we're lucky um, uh, and thank you for watching